Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Talk Headlines. I'm your host, Jay, and this is The Objective. Um, I just want to thank you guys for tuning in today. And before I begin, before I get into my quote of the day and the topic we'll be discussing today, um, I just wanted to shout out uh, Mr. Beverly IV. That's his um, Instagram name. Um, I actually received a message from him, I think it was about two days ago, and he expressed his um, support for my channel. He told me that he loved the podcast and he actually binge listened to every single episode on my SoundCloud account. And that really made me happy. It really made me happy. So I really want to say thanks so much to you, man. You've uh, definitely um, motivated me to continue. You know, and I don't have a lot of followers, guys. You can probably tell that I don't have a lot of followers right now. Um, I do this solely because I am convicted to do it. I feel um, a sense of duty Um, and I really enjoy doing it. I really enjoy doing the research. I really enjoy keeping up with current events. So that's the reason why I do it. So um, it brings me satisfaction. And I know it's just going to be a matter of time before. Um, other people catch on and they uh, are able to um, listen to some of the content that I have. So, again, uh, Mr. Beverly, thanks a lot, man. I really appreciate your support. We'll be in contact, bro. Um, he also asked me a number of questions, one of them actually looking at the topic of the day. Before we get into the topic of the day, uh, the quote that I have for you is one that I actually wrote May 3rd, 2012, about five years ago. The quote is transparency. A beautiful word, but even more beautiful, the meaning and the most beautiful of them all, the practice. I'll leave that with you guys. Transparency. So Mr. Beverly actually asked me about. um, He wanted me to kind of discuss uh, the Muslim ban, and this has been it has caused a lot of controversy on both. uh, The president actually gained critics on both the left and the right. And I think before we begin, we have to understand one thing. We have to ask the question, is it, in fact, a Muslim ban? The answer to that question is no. But you may say, well, what? The president said Muslim ban. He said those words. And you're absolutely right. He did. He absolutely did. I can, I'm not here to defend Mr. Trump. Mr. Trump has said many things off the cuff. He said Many inappropriate and profound and provocative things. Um, so we're not here. I'm not here to defend or act as, a, act as an apologist for President Donald Trump. What I am here to do is to judge the actions. So this is why it's not a Muslim ban. There are about 50 Muslim countries in the world. President Trump's pause, immigration pause It's not a ban. If it is a ban, then it's a temporary ban. We'll we'll say that then. It targets six countries out of the 50. If it was 50 countries that the president wanted to target, then we can we can say it's a Muslim ban. But if it's six out of 50, you I'm I'm going to I'm going to lay it out for you and then you can determine whether it's a Muslim ban ban so that's that's 12 percent of the muslim countries 12 percent if you can say that a pause on immigration for 12 percent of muslim countries is a muslim ban it's either my math is off or your rationale and reasoning is off this is clearly not a muslim ban if there was maybe even over 50 percent of the countries that were uh, facing a temporary ban, then we can possibly argue that this was some kind of Muslim. Ban. Even then, folks, even if it was a bit over 50, you can argue. Well, someone probably could. But the word Muslim ban is not appropriate for 12 percent of Muslim countries. That's six out of 50 countries. And let it be noted, folks, that 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 these six were actually from the list that President Obama picked and said were countries of concern. And these countries, Iraq, Syria, Iran, Sudan, Libya, Somalia, Yemen. These are countries in 2015 
that President Obama singled out as countries of concern. There was no outrage then. So today I listened to the Ninth Circuit oral argument. Uh, it was a state of Hawaii versus Trump. And representing the government was uh, the acting solicitor general, Jeffrey Wall, and representing the state of Hawaii was the acting solicitor general, Neil Katyal. And uh, Mr. Neil Katyal um, was actually the solicitor general um, under uh, the Obama administration in 2010 to 11. So the court was actually considering it was an oral argument and they were considering the legality of President Trump's revised travel ban. And it was actually revised as of March 6, 2017. So it bans people from six Muslim countries for 90 days. OK, it's important to know that green card and current visa holders are exempted from this ban and it stops the Syrian refugee admission for 120 days. Folks, the travel ban, I think it's very important that you know this. It is completely within the broad authority of the president, the president of the let's establish this right now. There is nothing unconstitutional about this ban. Nothing at all. I want you to understand that both sides at least the legal experts on both sides understand and acknowledge that there is no constitutional crisis with what the president has laid out. OK, that's point number one. There is nothing constitutionally um, unsound. Then you may be wondering if there is no constitutional crisis. If it's constitutionally sound, then why are there court proceedings? Why are there arguments? Why are so many people um, not in agreement over this 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 travel ban? And that's a great question. The only argument that the former acting solicitor general Neil Ketchell brought up was the bad faith exception. So what is the bad faith exception? So the opposition to the bill, they're arguing that the statements made by the president during his campaign and into his presidency may constitute that his ban is in bad faith. For example, discriminatory, racist, unconstitutional, so and so. And we'll get back to that. In, in the court, there were several cases that were actually listed and cited that gave credence to uh, President Trump's ban and basically proving that it is within his authorities because the way that legal proceedings work in law there's a lot of interpretation that needs to be done with the law it's very technical and that's why lawyers get paid the big buck so in court a lot of the times you'll have certain cases in the past that are brought up because they kind of set a precedent okay uh for example um they brought up a mandel case uh, if i and get the pronunciation here correct. You guys know I already have a problem with this. But Kleins, it's K, <laughs> um, it's K L E I N D I E N S T. You guys pr pronounce that however you see fit. But it's that versus Mendel. And basically, the Supreme Court ruled six to three in this case um, uh, that the executive branch can deny non U.S. citizens entry into the U.S. on a basis of a facially legitimate and bona fide reason, meaning. And this is the reason why I bring this up is because this was kind of the precedent that was set, proving that the president has the authority to do this. It was passed. It was ruled in a six three vote that the executive branch can deny non-U.S. citizens entry into the U.S. on the basis of a facially legitimate and bona fide reason. Herein lies the big issue. The government is stating, yes, there is a legitimate and bona fide reason, and that reason is national security. The opposition is saying that the reason why why President Trump wants to do this ban is not bona fide. It's not legitimate. It is racist and it's in bad faith. The only justification for this bad faith argument that the opposition held was that President Trump made a lot of offhanded comments during his campaign and into his presidency. Some of these comments that they used to state that this this poly, this um, immigration pause um, is in bad faith are as followed. So President Trump said, it's a lot easier for Muslims to immigrate than Christian refugees. That's one of the comments. He said he is going to be helping Christians big league. 
another quote, total and complete shutdown of Muslim entering the United States. And then another quote he said is, I think that Islam hates us. These are an example of the quotes that the the opposition is using to say that President Trump, um, um, his his immigration ban on these six Muslim countries is in bad faith and it's not constitutional because of that. And so Judge Paez, he asked, what if another president who never said any of these things that President Trump said was to, to, to implement this ban? Would there be an issue? Would it pass constitutional muster? And the opposition said, I think it would be different. Here's the thing, guys. <laughs> and this is I, I like that question from the judge is one of three judges. There, there's Judge Ronald Gold or um, Judge Richard Paez. And then uh, senior judge Michael Hawkins, all from the U.S. Court of Appeals in the Ninth Circuit. And he said, if it wasn't Trump that wanted this ban, but it was another president, because on paper, the ban is constitutional. The the opposition is arguing that because of the statements that Trump made in his camp during his campaign and his presidency, that's why it's unconstitutional. That's the argument, folks. And the opposition, um, Katyal said, I think it would be different if it wasn't Trump, if it was someone else who wanted to do this ban. It would be different. But and I really appreciate uh, I really appreciated General um, the, the Solicitor General um, Jeffrey Wall. He's a very articulate, well-spoken, eloquent, um, extraordinary vocabulary, very smart and intellectual man. And Jeffrey Wall, he said. If you're going to try to psychoanalyze the president and make insinuations and uh, make certain assumptions that cannot be proven, if that's going to be the reason why this bill or sorry, this EO um, doesn't pass. And that means executive order. If that's going to be the reason why this EO doesn't pass, that is a very dangerous precedent to be setting. Because both sides have already agreed that on paper, the immigration ban passes the constitutional test. And it's actually quite easy for it to pass a constitutional test because um, the, the EO is actually aimed at aliens abroad and aliens to whom they have no constitutional rights to enter, enter the United States of America. So it's very simple on that case alone that this passed the constitutional muster. And he, he says that if you cite the bad faith exception against the president in regards to this ban, then the onus is going to be on the accuser to prove that there, there was bad faith. And the only examples of bad faith are the, the, the things that the president has said during his campaign and into his presidency. And one thing that was very intriguing, I found, and very important for the listener is that he says if you're going to use the president's This is what Jeffrey Wall says. He said, if you're going to use the president's quotes and sound bites from the president, this is not verbatim, you have to in turn consider everything that the president has said. For example, when the president said that he wants good people to enter the country and a lot of Muslim individuals are entering and they are good people. Why aren't you taking that into consideration? Because it does not cooperate with the narrative that these Democrats have. Let me try to make this clear, folks. The Democrats acknowledge that on paper, the travel ban is constitutional. There's there are no qualms or no arguments about that. The only discrepancy and issue that is taken up by the Democrats is when you take into account the things that the president had said during his campaign and some even say during his presidency. What I'm saying and what uh, the acting solicitor general uh, Jeffrey Wall is saying. Is that if you if if that is your description, if your issue is with what the president has said against certain groups of people, then you should also consider the positive things he said about the same group of people. What he's essentially saying is that none of that matters. (laughs) 
Listen to what Jeffrey Wall says in his closing And what the statement. president said three minutes before he signed that in the presence of the newly sworn in Secretary of Defense was, I'm signing this order because I want to increase the vetting procedures for radical Islamic terrorist groups. Three minutes later when he signs the order and he makes this six word offhand comment, it's clear in context, and I think it's at least, uh, you know, within the presumption of regularity that we ought to afford to the head of a coordinate branch, what he's talking about are terrorist groups, not all Muslims everywhere in the world. There just isn't enough in this record to get you to bad faith under Den. And I think counsel wants to discount how remarkable it would be for the court on a handful of statements made by the president on both sides, right? You could look at SER 90, where the president says, I want people to come here who love this country. Many Muslims do. Many, many Muslims do. And we can go back and forth on the president's comments over time. And that's just not a judicial inquiry like what Mandel commands courts to do. And under that inquiry, there is not bad faith here. I'm going to end off this show with a thought. And this thought actually comes from uh, Matthew 21, verses 28 to 31. It says, what do you think? There was a man who had two sons. He went to the first son and said, son, go and work today in the vineyard. Verse 29, I will not, he answered. But later he changed his mind and went. Verse 30, then the father went to the other son and said the same thing. He answered, I will, sir. But he did not go. Verse 31, which of the two did what his father wanted? The first, they answered. President Donald Trump says a lot. From his Twitter feed to interviews to his speeches, he says a lot. But what is more important? What you say or what you do? I'm going to suggest to you today that we should all be judged on our actions. And the president's actions in regard to this travel ban are constitutional. There is no constitutional crisis. And the media would try to dissuade individuals and to persuade individuals that the president is a Nazi, that the president is a misogynist, that the president is a racist. And they've set the bar so low for the president and for themselves that they've trapped themselves in a box. They already have an image in their head of who President Trump is. So everything that he says, everything that he does will go through the filter of their assumptions and they'll splurt it out as what they call news. That's not reporting. That isn't being objective. And so I implore you to do your research. Listen to these interviews. Listen to these congressional hearings. Listening to the listen to these court proceedings. Take the time and listen. Get your news from the source, not from some watered down or insinuation injected, quote unquote, news outlet. Make it your objective to be objective. Have a good night.